Hi, Assalamualaikum. Hello everyone. I hope all of you in the best condition right now. So today we are going to continue chapter 8, the respira respiratory system in humans and animals. So today's subtopic, we are going to discuss 8.3, the gases exchange in human, and 8.4, the health issue related to the human respiratory system. So now let's we continue 8.3, the gases exchange in human. It is involved the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The gas diffusion depends on the partial pressure difference between two areas. How does the gas diffuse? The gas will diffuse from higher partial pressure to an, to an area with a lower partial pressure. It is set down a partial pressure gradient. The gases exchange and the transports of the respiratory gases involve external and internal respiration. Do you remember in the chapter 7, we have discussed about the internal respiration which is involved the oxidation of glucose with the presence of uh, oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. So, the gases exchange occur between the lungs and the blood, transport of the respiratory gases from lungs to the tissues, Gases exchange between blood and tissues, which is the oxygen and carbon dioxide, and transport of the respiratory gases from tissues to lungs. Now, let me discuss about the gases exchange between the lungs and the blood. In the lungs, the blood that enter the lungs capillary contain high partial pressure of carbon dioxide compared to the alveolus. It is said, uh, it is known as the deoxygenated blood. So, the carbon dioxide will diffuse out from the lungs capillaries to the alveolus. Then, it will be expelled out through the nose and mouth. Meanwhile, in the alveolus, which is contain higher partial pressure of oxygen than the lungs capillaries, so it makes the oxygen will diffuse into the lung capillaries, then combine with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin in erythrocyte. Erythrocyte is the red blood cells. Now, we are going to discuss about how the blood, which is uh, the lungs, will transport to the tissues. It is also known as oxygenated blood, which is uh, rich with oxygen and low with carbon dioxide. The blood will leave the lung through the pulmonary vein. At this time, it is said that high partial pressure of oxygen and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. When it reaches at the tissue scapulary, the partial pressure of blood in oxygen is higher than the blood cells, sorry, in the body cell. This is because the cellular, the cellular respiration will use the oxygen to release the carbon dioxide. The, carb the oxyhemoglobin will break down and oxygen diffuse from the tissue capillaries to the body cells. In the tissues, the cellular respiration will take place, which is the oxidation of glucose with the presence of oxygen, will release carbon dioxide, water and energy. In this cell, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher than the tissue in the capillary. So, the carbon dioxide will diffuse out from the body cells into the tissue capillary and transported back to the lungs via pulmonary artery. It is said as the deoxygenated blood. When the blood enters the lung, it is in the condition which is the low partial pressure of oxygen and high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now we are going to discuss about the transports of carbon dioxide in the blood circulatory system. How is carbon dioxide transported in blood? There are three ways, which is the 23% of carbon dioxide will combine with hemoglobin and form carbaminohemoglobin. Other 70% is transported in a form of bicarbonate ions and other 7% will dissolve in the as a carbonic acid in the blood plasma. Now we are going to discuss about how the carbon dioxide will transport to the lungs. The transports of the carbon dioxide from the body cells to the tissue capillaries start when the carbon dioxide released by the body cell bind with water in erythrocyte to form carbonic acid. The carbonic anhydrous enzyme that uh, have in the erythrocyte will catalyze the reaction to break down 
to form bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. Then the bicarbonate ion diffuse into the blood plasma and carries to the lungs. Then, once it reaches at the lung capillaries, bicarbonate ion in the blood plasma, it will diffuse back into the erythrocyte. The bicarbonate ion then will combine again with hydrogen ion and form carbonate acid. Then, carbonic acid will break down into carbon dioxide and water. So, carbon dioxide will diffuse through the lungs, capillaries into the alveolus and expel during exhalation. This is the flow chart to help you to understand better how the carbon dioxide that produced during the cellular respiration in the body cells will be transported to the lungs and will be expelled out through the exhalation process. During the cellular respiration, the body cells will release carbon dioxide. So, this carbon dioxide will combine with water to form carbonic acid. This is occur in the red blood cell. In the red blood cell or in the erythrocyte contain carbonic anhydrase enzyme which is will catalyze this reaction and break down to form bicarbonate uh, to form the bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. This is uh, the breakdowns of the carbonic acid, right? So then the 70% of the bicarbonate ion we transport into the blood plasma and carry it to the lung. And then once it reaches at the lung capillaries, the bicarbonate ion will combine back with the hydrogen ion, this hydrogen ion, and form back the carbonic acid. Last but not least, the carbonic acid will break down and form carbon dioxide and water in the alveolus and then will expel out through the exhalation process. Now we are going to continue 8.4, the health issue related to the human respiratory system. So what is uh, COPD? COPD is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that includes asthma, chronic uh, bronchitis and emphysema. So as you can see the diagram here, there are several differences between uh, this COPD disease. Now let me discuss more details. Okay, what is emphysema? It is about the alveolar structure which is loses its elasticity and increase in size. As you can see here, uh, this is the normal alveoli, which is the alveoli that affected by the emphysema. The alveolus wall damage, the total surface area of the alveolar will decrease and the gases exchange become less efficient. Next one is the chronic bronchitis, which is involved the parts of the bronchioles, which is the bronchioles will in become inflamed, swollen and blocked. So this will cause uh, the reduce of blood flow of the air reduce the dif uh, so it will uh, cause the difficulties in breathing large amounts of mucus will perform and so the person will continue is continuing the uh, per coughing and the mycelium will cause difficulty in expelling the mucus last but not least about the asthma which is also involved about the bronchial wall which is become swollen and thick and then the opening of the bronchial tube becomes smaller and air passage becomes narrower. So this leads to the difficulties in breathing and breathless for the person that suffers this disease. So with that, thank you very much. We have reached at the end of the chapter 8. So I hope all of you can do your own revision and have a lots of readings material right now so you can read by your own. Alright, thank you for uh, your attention and hope to see you again. Thank you very much.